Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all having a wonderful time! Here a quick guide for the Curse Monster Warlock in Last Epoch. The build works as a damage over time build with a focus on the bleed element damage. And by using the skill Spirit Plague and picking up Laceration Passive will give us a chance to apply bleeds when we hit the enemy afflicted by Spirit Plague. And we also picking up Exsingination to give those bleed stack a crazy 250% physical penetration but with the downside of inflicting bleed stacks to ourselves. This however is easily fixed by using the Exsingination body armor which makes us immune to bleeds when we are at low health. Also making this build use Ward as its main source of defense as the chest also makes us lose 20% of our health per second but gaining that as Ward instead. Another great item for this build is Blood of the Exile, a perfect fit for the build as it both increases bleed duration and makes enemies take up to 40% more damage from the bleed while moving. By being the Warlock we also get 5% more damage per curse on the enemy target and for this build it's going to be up to 9 curses at total for tons of damage multipliers. We have Acid Skin and Torment from the Catonic Fisher skill. We get Anguish and Withering from the Warlock passive tree. Bone Curse is going to be triggered from the Chaos Bolt skill. Desify from using Ghost Flame. Mark for Death and Penance from the Profine Veil skill. And lastly, Spirit Plague itself counts also as a curse. By using Chaos Bolt and specking into the Cursed Blood passive makes the hits from Chaos Bolt refresh the duration of all of these curses which is really nice for bossing for example as we can do our full rotation to apply all of these curses and then basically just causing Chaos Bolts once in a while to keep them up. By using Chthonic Rapture passive from the Chthonic Fissure passive tree gives us a chance to replace the spirits from the Fissure to Chaos Balls as well which also helps us greatly as we might have to stop casting ourselves sometimes. We also have some other damage multipliers as well on top of all of these curses. The Decrify curse itself makes the target take 15% more damage from damage over time. Column of Blood from the Warlock passive tree makes it so we cause a physical skill and the enemy have at least 25 stacks of bleed on them. Uh, we will get bleed overload for 10 seconds and this provides 15% more physical damage over time to bosses and also moving enemies. Doom Herald is another passive from the Warlock passive tree, makes us deal up to 24% more damage to damned enemies when we are channeling. And lastly, we also get a huge boost by using the Scorn Passive from the Profane Veil skill for an extra 50% more damage to Cursed Enemy for its duration. And when adding all of this up, we get quite a bit of damage with this build and really start to see some nice damage numbers. But not just Blaze to deal damage here, even if it is the biggest damage source. Uh, we also get other damage elements like Ignite and Damned and also Witchfire. And Witchfire is a element that gets triggered when we get Ignite or Damned Overload. And we trigger this by using a Fire or Necrotic skill. And those skills we have plenty of. So this is going to be triggering basically all of the time. And basically here this works the same as bleed overload, once we get x amount of stacks for each respective ailment then the overload will get triggered. Torment is another damage source and also a curse which will be applied all the time from Catonic Fissure and they all scale really really well with all of the more multipliers we get from this build. But to really scale the damage we want to get hundreds of bleed stacks and to do this we need to deal a lot of hits fast as we get bleeds per hit from the Spiric Plague skill. By using a Mad Alchemist Ladle we can get quite a bit of cost speed from this as we get 1% per 2 intelligence and if you're also lucky you could also go for even more cost speed here as a linear potential. The more spell damage per negative element from this wand does not apply to the bleeds or other dots that we are applying so you don't really have to worry about that too much. Chthonic Fissure is a great skill as it also releases spirits that will count as a hit and the skill is also going to be working as a turret you could say, staying up for a while and dealing damage for a short duration. 
and here we also want to get as much spirit frequency as we can get as it will shoot out more spirits for us and by using return below from its skill tree we'll also make the fisher shoot out spirits even faster when consuming infernal shades and this we get from using profane veil from the infernal deliverance passive applying a infernal shade on the target if we damage with profane veil and this works great to use as a finisher ability for a rotation as we need to use it to apply two of our curses and also as i mentioned earlier this also provides us the 50 percent damage multiplier from the scorn passive ghost flame as mentioned earlier is another way of applying the decrify curse but we also have this to trigger blood overload as we need to have a physical skill to trigger it. And by taking the arteries of malice node to change the ghost flame tag to physical. We also taking less damage from this and also providing some extra dodge rating for some extra defense while channeling and can also be used as a mobility skill. Do keep in mind on your mana though as it will drain it quite fast and you will not have any mana region while channeling the skill. And on the subject of mana, it can be a challenge to keep it up sometimes, but getting some mana region on your gear is usually enough to sustain this. Here we are also using a belt with the experimental mod which gives us flat mana and also extra mana region. Often we have used a potion which really helps with the build of feel. The last item that's worth mentioning is called the Twisted Heart of Ukros, a really strong relic that's used by a lot of caster builds. And here we get plus two for most of our skills, which is going to be really huge. We also get some cost speed and health from this as well. And this will also help us staying on low health as we convert a percent of our health to ward when we use a necrotic or elemental skill. I have not been able to push any crafting yet with this build as I've been uh, trying out other builds. Uh, the footage you see here is from normal empowered monos at uh, 100 to 150 corruption. But the damage and defense feel really great for this build and I do feel this have a lot of potential to push quite high corruptions. Let's check on some stats you want to focus on for this build. Here you want to go for health, resist, intelligence. Increase damage over time, cost speed, critical strike avoidance for the cap, and also some mana region. And for class specific modifiers, try to go for additional projectiles for Chaos Bolt, and this will be on your helmet, more hits, more bleeds, and also spirit frequency with Catonic Fissure on the body armor here, and same goes here, more hits, more bleeds. The build have some extra uniques that can be really beneficial for us, but I have not been lucky enough to obtain them yet with enough legend potential to be worth using, in my opinion. For the helm we can use Bone Claimers Barbute, lots of attributes here, armor and also getting ward per second per 3% uncapped necrotic resistance. On the belt, a chain of Ulros have quite a bit of great stat for the build as well, but also makes our potion grant ward instead of health. And for the gloves we can also use Mortality Grasp and here we're getting a chance to mark for death on hit with Necrotic spells and we'll open up 4 additional points on the Profane Veil skill. And for the idols we're going for Adorn Idols with increased damage over time while we have a element overload with either health or ward retention on it. Otherwise we also want to go for as much health as we can and also try to get yourself capped on your assist here. And for blessings from the Black Sun, here we went for Void Resistance. From Ending the Storm, we went to Ward Gain on Poison Huge and also Ward Decay Threshold. From Reign of Dragon, we went with Necrotic Resistance. And from the Age of Winter, here we want to go for Chance to Shred Physical Resist on Hit. And lastly, Spirit of Fire for the Flat Armor while we are channeling. And let's go and check out our scale here more in depth, starting with Spirit Plague. So Spirit Plague is going to be the one that applies a lot of bleed stacks for this build and really boosting the single target. Exsanguination will make the bleed inflicted by Spirit Plague have additional bleed penetration and this will ramp up to 250%. Laceration makes us have a chance to apply bleeds when we hit an enemy afflicted by the Spirit Plague. Putrid Recovery makes us gain ward when we are hitting an enemy afflicted by the plague. Acknowledging expands makes so plague now spreads once we deal a critical streak against a afflicted target. And pestilence will just give us increased global damage over time 
when we afflict the enemy with Spirit Plague, and this effect will last 4 seconds and can stack up to 13 times. The Thonic Fissure will open a further fissure on the ground and spitting out spirits that will hit enemies for us. We also will get 2 curses from using this skill. And the first curse is from Forbidding Shazam. Uh, the Fissure initial hit now curse enemy with acid skin. And another one is just for the spirits. When they are hitting an enemy, we will apply a curse called Torment, which will deal necrotic damage over time. Twisting Waves will make the Torment deal more damage per 2% uncapped necrotic resistance. Stygiant Current makes so the Fissure release spirits more frequently. Of Gloom and Flames basically make the Chronic Fissure be double the size, equals more spirits. Chthonic Rapture makes so the spirits now have a chance to be replaced by Chaos Bolt instead. And Return Below makes it so when the spirits hit an enemy affected by an Infernal Shade, it will consume that shade and release the spirits more frequently, up to a maximum of 60%. Chaos Bolt is going to be the ability that we are spamming out for ourselves, and here we get a lot of different things that will trigger from this skill. Excited Liberation makes the Chaos Bolt's hit have a chance per intelligence to cause rip blood at target enemies. Another Affliction will make the Chaos Bolt hit against cursed enemies will now cause Bone Curse. So this is where we get one additional curse from. And we're also using Reaper of Mayhem here. Chaos Bolt's hit have a chance per dexterity to cause your attack with Harvest. And Curse Blood, the most important one here. Chaos Bolt hit refresh the duration of your curses on them and grants you also some health per curse. Seed of Chaos basically makes it so we have a small chance here to uh, recast the Chaos Bolt. A Grave for 2 makes the Chaos Bolt deal more damage over time equals to a portion of your missing health. And Exalt in Mushery just makes the Chaos Bolt hits deal more damage here to Damned Ignite Bleed and Frost Beaten enemies. So here we get just some more damage multipliers from the initial hit. Ever Chaos for the cost speed. And then we're also using Destructive Intensity. And this is basically to increase the base crit of Chaos Bolt. We get uh, one critical chance here per stack and we can have up to 8 stacks on us. We use Profane Veil as a finisher skill and also to apply two additional curses. The first curse is from Grave Circle. Here we will apply Mark of Death to enemies, but also when entering Profane Veil, we also be applying Mark for Death on us, so to keep in mind of that. Penitent Tangle for the second curse, which is called Penance. Infernal Deliverance is the one that will give us some Infernal Shades for the Catonic Fissure to consume. Spirit Plated makes the damage reduction from armor, now also applies to damage over time while we are in Profane Veil, some extra defense here. And the big one, Scorn here, makes us deal more global damage to cursed enemies while we are in Profane Veil. And then we have Ghost Flame, our mobility skill, both for defense and for triggering curses, and also to trigger the blood overload. So third, Arteries of Malice, this is going to be uh, changing the skill from the Necrotic and Fire to Physical. And we put one point in Fist of Bone here, and this basically shoots out Marrow Shards towards enemies. As the Gold Flame skill itself doesn't count as a hit, but this does. It do adds up a little bit when hitting enemies while having the Spirit Plague on them. Decorative Mortal will be... Decorative Mortal will give the Decectrify Curse. After we channel the Ghostframe from a short duration, this day makes us take less damage from ignited, damned, or bleeding enemies while we channeling. Wraith Form gives us additional dodge rating per intelligence here when we are channeling Ghost Slime. Spectral Menace will reduce the channel cost here by 70%. Spirit of Dread makes the skill a movement skill. And Doom Surge gives us some extra movement speed when we channel with Ghost Flame. And here are a quick preview of the passive skill tree, but for more information about the build, I do recommend you to go and check out the last epoch build planner. To the top of the build planner you can also go to loot filters where you can find my ultimate loot filter with a lot of options depending on how strict you want it to be. Link for this will be in the description. So what do you think about the Curse Monster Warlock? Have you tried it out before or tried another version of it? Feel free to tell me in the comments below. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. If you got any other questions, feel free to drop a comment and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!